final week of the first month of football season is upon us all too soon. But luckily, we have four more to go, and we'll be here all season long for the best of pro and college football coverage on the All Ads Football Network, including today's show with our usual player and team analysis, including a huge game on Saturday night in Blacksburg as the defending national champs take on the Hokies. Speaking of the defending champs, Sean Watson plays big in Foxborough, and what's up with Amari Cooper? All that and much more is the r Lads Football Network with Dan Shanka on PSN starts now. All right, well, it is Wednesday, the 27th of September, 2017, and there was a huge, huge game, a huge, huge moment on Saturday night uh, that I just can't get enough of. Let's go. Now, I know uh, Dan Shanka, my co-host for the show, being in Iowa, probably, I don't know, I guess you have a little bit of a homer in you with Iowa. I would I would think that you would, Dan. Uh, but since Penn State was my pick to win the national championship, I, I definitely was breathing a sigh of relief in that one, even though they could run the table after that loss and still get to the postseason. But uh, we knew that was going to be a great game. And that was just, uh, uh, I mean, I was, I mean, Penn State had to be just going, wow, uh, we almost blew that one. And that was a tremendous uh, last drive by uh, McSorley and, and the team uh, to, to, to get the win on the last play of the game. Yeah, it, it really was. I mean, uh, they moved the ball down the field against a, a very good Iowa defense. The front seven of Iowa is really pretty good. Uh, they've got some depth there and everything. The linebackers are very good, is probably as good as, is, um, uh, you know, many of the top five uh, groups of linebackers in the country. And, and they you know, they, they, and they do a really nice job of, uh, but but I'll tell you what, um, uh, Penn State they they had to step up McSorley. Um, he, you know he's not going to be an NFL quarterback. He might be a yeah. reserve or something, you know. But man alive, he makes things happen. And then uh, he threw a beautiful pass right over that outstretched arm of the safety from Iowa, and uh, you know it was a touchdown with no a walk, like you said a walk off touchdown. Yeah, so, you don't you see know, that very often. Nope. And um, but hey, they. Uh, you know they deserved it because they they moved down the field against a very good Iowa team and um, it was a big play and and then uh, but I tell you that I was enthralled I, I just I mean I knew Barkley was good but uh-huh. to see him uh, live and in per- I mean this guy's uh, he's awesome I mean plus he's well you know and I know this sounds crazy but I think he's, he might be the best running back in football I mean not, I'm including pro football I, I hear mean, you because he. You know, I mean, he just, uh, he's built like, I mean, you, you can't even imagine this guy is built like an NFL running back right now and probably better than most, you know. Um, and, uh, but anyway, he, uh, and he catches the ball, he runs with it. And on that touchdown, by the way, he laid, a, you know, there, I was sent a blitzer yep. and he picked up the blitz, yep. you know, and, and then <laughs> earlier, when uh, Josie Jewell uh, end up, uh, you know, he got that interception, you know, McSorley threw that interception to him. Barkley's one made the tackle, you know, and so um, I do, I do know him one thing, uh, you know, Zeke Elliott won't do that. So no, that's know, true. I, I think he's moves ahead of Elliott too. So that's right. He's a yeah. Barkley's a big timer. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I don't, I haven't looked, but it, I, it's been a long time since a running back has been the first pick of the draft. I mean that had. I mean, do you even have any idea? I mean, again, we haven't looked at looked at the research right. yet. No, but... it's, yeah, I, no, it's been a long time. Everybody, you know, wants the quarterbacks. Or, but what, one thing, Cleveland went for the best player last year, and obviously, you know, they could have went. They, you know, they could have went uh, last year and not taken, um, you know, Garrett. But uh, but they did, you know. So uh, and, and but this year, I tell you what, uh, Barkley. To me, I, I'll be real interested to see who's going to pass. Maybe a Hall of Fame running back uh, yeah. for, I mean, if you pass it for Sam Darnold, you ought to be shot in the head. You yeah, know, that's you true. Be fired yeah. the minute you do it. You know. Well, that's so, the thing. That's why probably again it will all depend. I mean, if you think about it, 
the teams that aren't doing too well right now are the teams that people are thinking about the top pick. I, I, and most of them will need a quarterback. So you would think with – now the thing though is is we, we, would, we would have to believe and you, you, you would have to believe that Darnold, if he comes out, would be the first pick. Even, even though he's not playing the way people would like to see him play right now, there's no reason to believe as of today that he wouldn't be the first pick, correct? Well, I, I, he's third on our list. I mean, I wouldn't, I would, I wouldn't take him. Right. I mean, he makes too many bad decisions. I mean, he just when you throw nine touchdown passes and seven interceptions, and he could have had some more interceptions. Okay. You know, I mean, I just see, he's got a problem. He should stay in another year. He may be a year from now, you know, uh, or so he may be. But I, I would not take him the first. Absolutely not. I mean, like I said. Um, first of all, he, he, I mean, he throws a loopy pass. He's got kind of a little hitch when he throws and, um, he stares down his receivers and, and, uh, you know, when you throw seven interceptions already in this, I, I don't, I'm sorry, but, um, you know, I don't care if you're four or no, that doesn't mean anything to me when you make all those mistakes because in the NFL, one or two mistakes a game cost you a game. So. Um, no, I, I, I take Rose and probably ahead of him. And I, I, I tell you what, we put, uh, we put, uh, Mayfield ahead of him too. Cause he, here's, here's a guy throwing what, 16 touchdowns and no interceptions. Okay. Know? So, and, so you're saying that you actually, you're not talking about the third pick. You're talking about the third quarterback. Right. Third okay. Quarterback. All right. So, that's, that's interesting. That's you know, good. That's good for teams out there that are that may not get the first pick. They're going, well, maybe I'll get the fifth or the sixth. And this is also why I say teams don't tank. Tanking is stupid because, you know, you could wind up with a fifth or sixth pick and still get a guy that everybody like like oh, Jet fans are all clamoring for Sam Darnold. Oh, we want you to lose and stink. Well, they could end up with the sixth pick and still get maybe Sam Darnold. Not that it'll happen, but you can get Darnold, you can get Mayfield or you can get Rosen. Yep. And uh, like I said, so, I yeah. And, uh, but to me, if you got the first pick in this draft, you better, you take the best player. Mm -hmm. And Barkley, to me, is head and shoulders above anybody else, uh, right now. And, and, and I, you know, in fact, our second, uh, you know, in our, our top 33 well, that's coming out in our book, uh, a booklet is it, Darwin James is our second. Wow. And then, uh, Mason really? Fitzpatrick is third. So, you know, Rosen's fourth. And then, uh, from LSU is fifth, so you know we don't we got uh, you know one we got uh, no quarterbacks. Well, no, Rosen is only one in the top five. Okay, even though of course you know how the NFL is, and the draft yep. will go quarterback, 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 and then uh, Barkley. Uh, yep. So that's how it is. Uh, but that does mean that any team out there that needs a running back. Uh, that winds up with a pick in the top five may very well get uh, the bonanza uh, of them all. And uh, they might get lucky and get Barkley. Uh, Cause you know how it is. If a team needs a running back and a quarterback and there's Barkley or one of those top quarterbacks, they're going to choose a quarterback. That's just the way that they do it. Now, w whether that's right or wrong, you know, uh, is there, let me ask you, is there a quarterback that once you get past those guys, again, well, I don't know where Josh Allen is right now. So let's just say, if you, because uh, because Cleveland, uh, uh, and, and we've seen this happen before, where teams maybe early second, and then they trade back into the first round to get their quarterback. So could a team take Barkley and then trade back up into the first round and still get a chance at a guy like Josh Allen, or do you think he'll also be a top ten pick? No, I I don't. I I never thought Josh Allen was going to be a top ten pick. Uh, you know, and I said that last year when people were clamoring about him coming yeah. out i go for what i know you know what what do you guys you know i mean it's just stupid yep. uh, you know some of the stuff that is just of course you know the people that are blabbing all this are not decision makers they're you know twitter guys or something like that you know but uh, and not they're not scouts or you know anything else i mean you just you know i mean you just um i mean he, josh allen is a second round guy that's what mm -hmm. he is and uh you know and and he needs to be developed you know, and he's got the tools. I mean, I love his arm. You know, we saw him down in Iowa City live and everything, and I love his arm, and I thought he actually improved um, this year over last year, to be honest with you. And uh, But, they, you know, I mean, he really struggled. Um, you know, he struggled this year. And um, It's hard you know, to evaluate put, him, isn't it, because of the personnel losses? It's it's a little bit harder. Right. Well, yeah, he didn't. He lost all his receivers yeah. and his running back. Yeah. You know, no, that's, you're exactly right. So, um, but nevertheless, um, still, he, 
I mean, last year, coming into this season, I still saw him as a second-round guy. Now, oh, yeah. he had all his receivers back. Those receivers made great catches for him last year. And three of them, well, all four, counting the running back and three receivers, they're all on an NFL roster, whether it's, you know, the 53 or they're on the, uh, you know, on practice squad. Yep. So, you know, he had, he had some talent there around him. But, but anyway, yeah, you, you're right. I mean, it's a possibility somebody wanted Allen and they got Barkley early. They could trade back in and probably get him. That's not a bad um, idea either, is, you know, is, is to say, hey, you know what? If I can come out of the draft needing a quarterback and a running back, take Barkley first, get Allen second, I, I've hit a home run. Yeah. And you know what? Hey, don't forget about Mason Rudolph. Mason you know, Rudolph, I mean, Rudolph, too. Yeah. You know, I mean, right now, Rudolph, we got him rated ahead of Allen, too. So, I mean, it's just like, um, you know, there. I mean, like I said, it, you, you got to go with what you see, you know, not what people think. Oh, uh, sure. You, know, yeah. you can't ignore what's going on. You know, you, it's, if, if you do, then that's, you know, then you get fired. Then that, Then you deserve it, you know? Well, what would you say right now then? Uh, obviously, Barkley has, uh, you know, he's got to be up there as far as, uh, well, he, he's got to be number one. He should be right now. You would think that, and I haven't looked at the Heisman voting or the, uh, not the voting, but the odds, but uh, you would have to believe that Barkley and Mayfield should be clearly one and two. And, and, right. and Lamar Jackson shouldn't even be in the top 10. So I don't even no. want to hear him. So, uh, but it should be, and, and Barkley should be the guy right now, even though Mayfield's got the big win. He's got the signature win at Ohio State, which they like, they usually like, you know, they didn't take that into account with Lamar Jackson last year, but those are the type of wins that can get Baker Mayfield the Heisman edge, but it's a long season. And if Barkley and Penn State keep winning uh, and people start seeing him more often in these big games and how incredible he is. I mean, some of those runs that we saw on Saturday night, it was like, holy mackerel. <laughs> Some of the moves he was making were incredible. Yeah, you know, there, there's some here's some numbers on him that I got from, uh, you know, there's summer workouts and stuff. But I mean, he ran four three three, which you know I'm going to say he's probably a you know four three seven guy because uh, people at times he probably had a quick finger. But uh, you know, I mean, he, he squatted 650 pounds. He bench pressed 455 pounds. You know, his, his uh, uh, 20 agility was four flat, you know, 3.98, somewhere in there, vertical 38, uh, broad jump 10, 10, and, he, you know, and he power claimed 405. I mean, to see him, how cut up he is in his calf muscles and his, mm -hmm. I mean, he just, and plus he's flexible. I yes. Mean, you know, he, he's muscular, but he's super flexible. Yes. So he's not a stiff like, no. um, you know, uh, oh, like Richardson was out of, uh, Alabama a few years ago you know he went early he was a stiff you know and this guy is and plus he's very I mean well I tell you Franklin's purposely throwing the ball a lot to him too so why not people can, can see yeah see what I mean know, he's that he's the he, complete package there's no weakness on him he's the nope. perfect running back isn't he yeah we called it the perfect storm and when we talked about him in in our uh, okay. preview, uh you know yeah I mean he so I mean it, yeah he blocks he catches he he you know, he runs with the ball. He, mm -hmm. Hey, throw in uh, special teams as a kickoff return guy. Yeah. So yeah, keep him away from that uh, <laughs> at this point. I know. I I couldn't believe it either, but they got him back there. And I I tell you what, that's pretty gritty to do that because I tell you what, a lot of people the only way they can bring him down is cut him low, and you don't want him to cut one of. The, I mean, you know, cut one of them knees or something out yeah. or break his ankle. But you know, because they're not going to hit him up high. I'll tell you that. Yeah, so, and matter of fact, the 2018 Our Lads NFL Draft Preview uh, is available. Uh, so, uh, if they order it now at ourlads.com, they'll get it next week, right? Absolutely. All right, that's awesome. Can't wait to get mine. And so, uh, all right, so Barkley's on there. Give me give me two others. Uh, Mayfield has to be as your top three offensive players in the country right now. Because, again, I remember we talked about Mayfield last year, and he was, okay, well, you know, uh, not necessarily a first rounder, not even sure with the system. And he has just risen up your charts. I know that. So, uh, so he's got to be the second guy. Uh, so unless I'm wrong, uh, th those are two, give me a third, uh, unless I'm wrong. <laughs> no, no, no. I tell you what, no, we, we love Mayfield. Uh, you know, I mean, um, he, the guy's a playmaker. Uh, he makes things happen. I, he, I mean, he's, he, he definitely, uh, 
is, you know, and, and I'm not going to put him in the Manziel boat at all, mm-hmm. but, you know, uh, this guy's um, uh, different. He's got a stronger arm, actually. And, uh, but I tell you what, I, we're going to throw Josh Rosen for now in the top three okay. offensive guys, along with the other two, with Barkley and, uh, you know, and uh, Mayfield. All right. So give me uh, – so I would assume then you've already given me a hint about a couple of defensive guys. Would Derwin James be uh, at the top of the list? Yep. Yeah, Derwin James is a big safety from uh, Florida State. I mean, boy, you know, I went back the other day too and looked at the Alabama film and, and think, I mean, this guy just – uh, you know, and then uh, just makes plays all over the field, and and uh, I mean he's big and strong and can really run. He's athletic. And How does he compare so, to Adams? Uh boy, he, you know he's a little bit. Uh, he got a little bit more length to him. Um, I I love Adams, and I loved Adams all last year, and um, you know, and uh, but I think uh, they're very similar. Except okay. uh, James probably a little bit bigger. Okay. All right. So bottom line is that's good. Good. Uh, uh, that, that's a good comparison there. A good company for Derwin James to because uh, uh, Adams, as we already know, and, and what we saw on Sunday, that was his breakout game against Miami. And he's going to be a, a force for the Jets for many years to come. So the other two defenders that uh, tops your list. Well, I tell you, uh, we got Minka Fitzpatrick uh, up there um, again. You know, you got these guys that are both free safety, strong safety. Mink has been playing corner out there uh, this year, too, and uh, he's just um, a terrific uh, football player. Um, like him a lot. Arden Key from uh, LSU just start, got back in the swing of things. He kind of knocked the rust off a couple of weeks ago, and then Mississippi State, he's getting, you know, back to full strength again. But, I mean, he's a little bit bigger than he was in the past. He's around 260 now, 6'5", 260. And, okay. You know, here's a – cat quick guy that you know i mean so you can you can put you know james and fitzpatrick and key and then another guy that i really like from alabama is uh deron Payne. um you know Payne is is a, a guy that that hustles and 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 works every play and uh, a guy like bradley chubb from north carolina state so you know i got like five or i guess five well, we got there's six defensive guys in the top seven. Okay. You know. Yeah, so. and that was a big win for NC State uh, over Florida State uh, as uh, Florida State broke in a, a true freshman uh, with Francois out for the year. Uh, looks like uh, unless that kid grows up fast, could be a long year for <laughs> Florida State. He is, I tell you what, you call it talk. I mean, he is a <laughs> splendid splinter now. I mean. <laughs> He is so skinny. Uh-huh. I didn't know if those little skinny legs could hold up uh, his body because uh-huh. they said he weighed 169, and they might have been generous. You know, I mean, <laughs> he was so slender. I don't know. Hey, they better get some blocking up front, or he's going to be on a stretcher too. Yeah, they've got a tough schedule. They got to play Miami, uh, then they get yeah. at Clemson, at Florida. They got to host Louisville. E- even the game at Duke won't be easy for them. So no, uh, well, I'll tell you what. Yeah, those guys, the two defenses, Clemson and Ella and uh, oh, yeah. Louisville, oh, yeah. are loaded, you know, and they, he he's not going to make it by those guys unless they get some blocking. Yeah, that shows you that Clemson's game on Saturday night at Blacksburg is monumentous for them because they, it, schedule-wise, you know, things won't get tough again until their last three of their last four games with the two road games being extremely winnable at North Carolina state and at South Carolina, not that they will be easy, you know, but they're obviously very winnable. Uh, and the toughest game is the game uh, at home against Florida state and a true freshman. So uh, if see, even if see the way I look at it, even if Clemson loses on Saturday night, and I'm not going to say they won't. Uh, I mean, they, they, Virginia Tech's good team. It's on the road. It's Blacksburg. It's at night. You still have a, a quarterback at Clemson that's a little bit green. So anything can happen there that uh, that even if they lost that game, as long as they run the table like they did last year uh, with one loss, no reason to think they won't get the respect uh, and get into the postseason uh, and into the playoffs. But uh, yeah, that Virginia Tech game, uh, that game is going to be a lot better than maybe we originally had thought. Uh, and, and probably that's because they have their own freshman, the redshirt freshman, Joshua Jackson, 
uh, who's uh, off to a nice start. The defense uh, has been, you know, pretty much dominating everybody uh, since the West Virginia game. That and they should. I mean, the competition hasn't been all that great. Uh, but uh, we talked about how Fuente lost some big players last year. That all those guys, those three guys, should never have left early. They all left right. early. They all got drafted late, if they got drafted at all. Uh, but uh, yet they still keep uh, moving along Virginia Tech. And Fuente, uh, you know, it's good to have Bud Foster there as your defensive coordinator still. Uh, but uh, things are starting to look pretty good for Virginia Tech, and they got a big test on Saturday night. Yeah, they do. And uh, But I tell you, uh, Clemson is, uh, you know, they, they're, they're starting to, to get their legs under them a little bit. and. Uh, and uh, that defense, of course, is going to always keep them in every single game. But, uh, no, I, I can't, uh, you know, speak enough about – I mean, I love – I mean, they got – I think we got uh, their whole defensive front, you know, in our top uh, – in our, our top 33. Um, <laughs> you know, if not – if they're not all there, I mean, like Austin Bryant, uh-huh. he's an underclassman that we got in there. And, I mean, they just – I mean, they just got a tremendous group of uh, guys up up front. And then, you know, Quellen Farrell, uh, there's another one that, you know, I mean, he could be, he might end up being the top 10 when all the smoke is cleared uh, this year. And then you got Christian Wilkins, of course. And I mean, they, 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 and then they got guys they just rotate in there. And uh, so, I mean, that, those guys beat, and we talk about offensive lines that can't block. Well, they better start blocking because Clemson's going to run right through them. Yeah, Clemson uh, looks awfully good right now. That's why I say, even if they were to somehow lose a game, and look, last year they lost a game that nobody thought they were going to lose at home. So uh, mm-hmm. every team can lose. That's what I kind of don't like about the whole system in college football. It's like, it's, you know, you lose a game, everybody panics. And it's like, you know, it's, it's, a not, it's not natural. You know, every team in every sport should be able to lose a game and not feel like it's the end of the world. But that's the, that's the way we live in college football nowadays. Uh, again, we got we, at least we have four teams in a playoff, so uh, you get the extra two teams. Uh, and that does give a team like Clemson an opportunity that if they were to have a hiccup, they're just so good that you can't. I can't imagine that Clemson would drop more than one game this year if they do drop a game. Uh, but this is a good test for Virginia Tech to find out whether or not uh, they're for real uh, because their schedule also is is actually pretty 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 good. I mean, after the Clemson game, they really only have one other major test at Miami, even though I, I think there's a lot of people in college football that are just college football fans that were delighted uh, to see Virginia uh, uh, beat up on Boise. Uh, Brocko Mendenhall, that shouldn't be a surprise to see uh, what they, they got a very good coaching staff there. Uh, and uh, they had a very bad year last year, uh, changing systems and, and culture. Uh, but that was just a very nice win uh, for Virginia and Mendenhall. And uh, and I don't think it was a fluky win. And not that I think Boise State is anywhere near as good as they used to be, but still, that was a very nice win for the program. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And uh, one other team I want to throw in here, uh, too, is um, – and I was happy to see them uh, win the other day but because he, he's done really a nice job there. But uh, North Carolina State, They've got, believe me, they got some people up front too, besides Chubb, that uh, can bring some heat to you. You know, they, their defensive front is loaded, and uh, they they can uh, beat you up pretty good too. So, um, you know, and they hey, they they really beat Clemson last year. You know, I mean, but no, that's they true. Didn't on the scoreboard, yeah. You know, they they so hey, they uh, they're gonna they're, Clemson's gonna have their hands full there too. So if That'd be their next big game in my mind after Virginia Tech. Yeah, matter of fact, a guy like Jalen Samuels. I mean, that's a guy that is oh, yes. very much needed in the NFL. Sort of like I know a couple of players that I wanted to ask you about in the NFL uh, that are making the rounds this week. Uh, guys, uh, um, uh, running backs like Thompson, of course. Chris Thompson is off to a great couple of weeks for the Redskins. And Wendell Smallwood is going to be playing now a bigger role for the Eagles uh, because of Darren Sproles' injury. And what I'm talking about is I'm not necessarily talking about pint-sized running backs, but I'm talking about running backs that are very good receivers, dynamic guys, sort of like Samwell for Ohio State last year that went in the second round. How does how does Jalen Samwell, what kind of guy do you think he is? Is he like a – uh, a third, fourth round kind of guy. Can he be that type of guy, a value guy uh, for a team? Absolutely. In fact, you know, I mean, we got him listed. We didn't really know where to put him, you know, because uh, 
uh, we got him later. He's our top fullback, but we you know you're not your throwback type yeah. fullback, uh, you know. But but he's a fullback H back guy that okay. um, people are going to move around. And uh, yeah, no, he, he hey, he's a guy, a big guy with speed and um, catches the ball well. I say big, you know, he's like six three, you know, two thirty five somewhere in there, you know. And and uh, but he is a definite weapon. So yeah, you would draft that guy as a weapon. Uh, it's you know. If he again, I always hate. You know, I refer to this, but uh, you know, uh, it depends what he runs his forty and all sure. that stuff. But but he's a he's going to be up there. I mean, he's a, a terrific football player. Uh, by the way, uh, speaking of games this week, uh, were you surprised that? Because I know you know the history of Miami of Ohio, uh, and 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 we talked about them a few times last year because it was so nice to see all the wins at the end of the season and for them to actually put themselves in a position, they go to a ball and he almost won the division, almost went to the uh, Mac cha- championship game. Uh, and so you got to believe that they're going to have a good season again this season. But uh, so it's nice that they're back on the map. I didn't realize with the, you know, cause they, of course they have that the coaching uh, uh, history at that program that they hadn't played Notre Dame since 1909. Uh, and they're going to face Notre Dame. Now, Notre Dame, you know, won a few games. Uh, they, they won the game uh, last week. Uh, it beat Boston College week before that. Uh, so, you know, okay, very nice. Uh, but Miami of Ohio is not a bad football team, and Notre Dame better play a good game or else they might be in for, a, you know, this, it could be a tougher game than they think. Yeah, they, they, you know, Notre Dame can't look by anybody. No. You know, they, they hey, they've got a, a lot of things that they've got to iron out and, um, you know, I know they've uh, had, you know, some, you know, getting Michigan State the other night with, a, you know, a feather in their hat and all that stuff. But, um, they no, they've got to take care of business. Uh, you know, they got to be focused on the game that week in Miami of Ohio. You know, they, they'd love nothing more, of course, than to beat Notre Dame. All right. So um, Sam Darnold, uh, USC Cal, uh, that one was pretty close. And the one thing, I, a, a couple of things, first of all, of course, USC's got the game with Washington State this uh, this uh, weekend. Uh, Darnold goes up against Falk. So that that'll be a, a good quarterback matchup. Uh, you know, I actually think and I, and I was reaffirmed. I, I talked about this on the sh- on, on the college football show on Saturday that uh, that I think that they got it right with Justin Wilcox, California. Uh, this, yeah, no, their I offense, agree. yeah, because and I believe that Dykes probably would have still been there had Wilcox not been available. Because it's not like Dykes was terrible; it's just that right. I think they realized, hey, we got a guy who coached here before; he's a defensive guy. We got to start playing some defense here. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, they that um, they get that short up. And Cal has always had a great tradition of offense, so you know they can. Uh, but I tell you, all those spread offenses out there and then you also got to be able to play stanford you know with uh yeah. their running attack and things and and usc's got their stars and running backs and people too so um but um yeah uh, wilcox is definitely the right guy and they just got to get recruiting and get in some other players and cal's not easy to get into so um academically mm. and um but they, they can do that um, hey, they, they, uh, you know, Wilcox is a guy that can, can bring him around. Yeah. He, cause he was probably the best uh, d- defensive coordinator in college football last year, uh, with, uh, what he did over at Wisconsin. So, uh, really nice marriage there. Uh, and, uh, it looks like they're going to have some success there. So you, so USC, uh, uh, and, and, and Washington state, this will be the second game, you know, for, uh, for, I guess, if you want to call it a prime time doubleheader, you got Clemson, Virginia tech, then when that game's over. You could probably catch the second half of USC and Washington state. I'm actually a little bit surprised to see that as only a three and a half point line. I will say that, uh, mm-hmm. look, I, I, I liked Cal last week cause I thought the line was too big. USC coming off the Texas game and that's the way it worked out. Uh, but this one, I mean, this, I mean, uh, Washington state is not on par with USC when it comes to talent. So, uh, maybe it's because they just think that something's going wrong with USC that wait a second, they should have blew out Texas. They probably should have blown out Cal. They're not blowing out anybody. Maybe, maybe they're not as good as we think. Well, I'll tell you what, Western Michigan gave them all they could handle too. That's true. You know? And, uh, so, um, I, I, well, first of all, the, you know, Washington State will probably score too fast uh, if they, you know, because Fall can, now he can throw it. Now he's, you know, he's uh, our fifth, sixth, seventh quarterback or something out there in this draft class. And, uh, 
But, you know, I mean, the guy, he, he's in that, the air raid system, and they spread those guys out, and then they, you know, give the ball to their running back. And uh, so they, they've got to be a, be prepared to tackle out there, uh, Southern Cal. They can't fall asleep to switch. And Darnold can't be throwing interceptions that he does. They're, they, I mean, they, they'll they make you pay for it. You know, Washington State will, you know, score, make, make – uh, you know, take advantage of all those turnovers. So um, Darnold's got to be a lot smarter with the ball. And I don't know, he, to me, he just, I, I don't know. I, I, he just didn't, he didn't seem like the same guy that, you know, beat Penn State. Too much success, Rose Bowl too much year. success, too fast, something like that. Uh, yeah, I think, I, I, you know what, I mean, to me right now, he better plan on coming back from what I've seen. Yeah, you see, I mean, this is another thing that I, I, I've mentioned repeatedly. You can't count on guys also. To, to come out you don't know if he's coming out and at this right. point why why should he come out uh unless he picks it up unless you know, unless his, by, by the end of the season he's got a 40 to 7 touchdown to interception ratio instead of whatever it is right now nine to seven yeah. or good uh, luck <laughs> <laughs> all right and by the way falk is what the fourth round guy third round yeah okay yep yeah he, you know i i think uh and you know somebody really loves him they you know he might be in third but i think he's around fourth round all right, uh, sticking in the Pac-12, Stanford, and uh, they had uh, – actually, because we didn't have time last week, they had that loss to San Diego State, and uh, Rashad Penny – but that was a great game between the two top rushers in college football that probably nobody knows, and that's Penny and Love. Uh, Love is really just broken out out of nowhere after a big start. You know, look, he had McCaffrey in front of him. That's going to happen. But he has been uh, big time, and, you know, this is what Stanford does. They, they have great linemen. They run the ball. They have good running backs, sometimes great running backs. So maybe not a surprise. But uh, between Love and Penny, you know, what, is, what do we got going on there? Because a lot, because everybody, oh, Donnell Pumphrey and, and, and all these, you know, historical records he broke. And yet you kept looking at Penny last year, and you kept seeing, like, Pumphrey would get, like, 200 and Penny would get like 130. Uh, and it would be like, wait a second, who's this Penny guy? And now without Pumphrey, you know, Penny's uh, uh, a man on the loose. So, uh, and he's got a bigger guy than Pumphrey. Yeah, he is. You know, he's about 220 pounds. And, uh, you know, when I was watching in, uh, the, you know, uh, San Diego State last year and they bring in Penny, you know, I actually liked him. There's a lot to like about him even over Pumphrey. You know, Pumphrey was that little quick guy and yep. you know, to me a third down guy, whereas Penny can be a feature, you know, first and second down kind of back. Yeah. And uh and um, you know, he's got stuff to work on all that and but he's gonna get better. And of course they had that big rainstorm out there when they played the Air Force and he didn't get unleashed till late in the game. Uh and then they came back and they beat Air Force after a big, you know, rainstorm and stuff out there. But um, now, if Penny catches the ball well out of the backfield, again, here, here's a kickoff return guy that's 220 pounds. Mm. That's, you know, how he made his bones out there at uh, San Diego, you know, while he's backing up Pumphrey. So, um, but, uh, and he should, I would anticipate him just getting better and better. In fact, you know, they're, they may be the non power five, yes. uh, you know, entry yep. into the, into the sweep, into the tournament this year. Yeah, they uh they, they on their schedule it looks like they got two games that can bite them. The game this week, which is not a conference game, but a game that would count, of course, with the Power Five kind of non-Power Five uh, bowl status, because you'd like to be able to you know get in undefeated. But even if they lose a game, they could do it. Uh, but Northern Illinois at home this weekend, uh, which they should win. They're a better team than Northern Illinois, but it good, should be a good game. Two defensive teams, but they have Penny and Northern Illinois doesn't. And uh, Boise State in a couple of weeks, and uh, they're better than Boise right now. And, uh, you know, I'm getting the feeling I know he's won a lot of games. And when you win a lot of games, you're not going to get you're going to get a little bit more of a leash. But it just looks like Boise State is not recruiting the same players they used to. And it's starting to finally show. Yeah, they're they're, uh, you know, it, it it's going to be we'll we'll see. But, I you know, they'll probably come back and be a real uh threat down the stretch in, in the Mountain West, you know, like they always are. But uh, I think they've been beat up a little bit and, and things. So I think that if they get well and, 
you know, they're young kids start playing, you know, up to the Boise State standards, they'll be better. Yeah, they got a tough schedule. They got to go at BYU, even though BYU is not playing well, at San Diego State uh, and at Colorado State. So, um, uh, and they haven't been to the uh, to the Mountain West Championship game in a few years. Okay, so, uh, but uh, what Sanford beat UCLA. Did you, have you seen, you mentioned Rosen. So, even though UCLA has lost a couple of games, we know it's not Rosen's fault. So everything no, they, their offensive line is, I mean, everybody keeps talking about the center Quisenberry and I'll tell you, he, he, he can't block anybody, you know, I mean, I just, uh, and they've got to play, uh, I mean, you know, it, it, Hey, his receivers, I don't know how many drops they had the other day on top of it all, but, uh, the UCLA receivers had several drops also. And, uh, okay. so I'm not putting that on Rosen. Rosen throws a beautiful tight spiral, Hits them right between the numbers, and uh, they can't catch it. So that's the problem uh, that they have, and um, you know. So uh, that's why. I mean, he throws a much better ball than Darnold does, and uh, he's. You will look at his footwork. His footwork's a lot better than Darnold. Darnold's kind of all over the place and, and stuff. And I just, like I said, I, I mean, I have nightmares that he might be a worse Carson Palmer, which is a nightmare, you know. Okay. All right. Uh, Darnold out. Darnold, uh, Darnold uh, yes. You know, I love. Uh, I, I, there's a lot of things I like about you know the footwork, the accuracy. You, you watch Rosen; he's always got his feet under him. You know, he's, okay. he does a lot of things the right way. He's a he's a good athlete. Um, he, he's got he's a lot better athletically than than Darnold is. Uh, you know, I just. But we'll see. I mean, he he's got to keep his head up. I know he's he's been known to chew some tail out there yeah. too. You know. All right. Uh, well, you know, losing will uh, it'll get to you. So uh, we know that they uh, th- things were going pretty well for UCLA a few years ago. Then they got Josh Rosen, and everybody was really high on everything that was going on there with Jim Mora. Uh, but uh, they, they've lost some key guys, as you, as we all know, to graduation last year. Uh, and uh, throw in the fact that you know Rosen got hurt last year, and then it was just uh, not a very good year, four win season, and and all of a sudden. I mean, if they didn't come back against Texas A&M, they'd have three lost. So uh, things aren't going well right there for Rosen. Uh, but, uh, hey, you know what? He'll probably come out any way he should, uh, and maybe he will wind up uh, as the top quarterback. Uh, what about Arizona State? I know things have been – speaking of things not going right, Arizona State, had, things hadn't been going right for Todd Graham. He was the hot coach a few years ago that couldn't make up his mind where he wanted to coach. Uh, but then finally, you know, you, you got to, you started to figure maybe he's got a nice little home here. They, they went back-to-back 10-win seasons. But – uh, the last two years, I mean, they haven't been able to get at the 500 mark. Uh, and and then even this season, you know, they had to loss at home to San Diego State, which is a tough team. But, you know, you're, you're a Pac-12 team. you got to win that game. They didn't. Uh, then they lose to Texas Tech, and you're thinking, here we go again. But then they have a big win uh, against Oregon last week, and they really do need to kind of turn things around. And, and, and it seems like they have some talent on defense. Not 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 a whole lot, but they got a few guys that seem to be interesting, including Karan Crump, who I know looks like he's banged up and uh, won't play this week. Um, so, and, and I know Wilkins seems to be playing better at quarterback too. He's not a star, but he's playing better than he did last year, that's for sure. Uh, so, who is Crump the top player on their defense? Yeah, I, I think uh, you could you could certainly argue that uh, that you know he's in that. Um, mix. I mean, I, I like their two running backs, but you know, I think that they got to get, uh, um, you know, give those running backs keep, keep giving them the ball too instead of. But see that and the other thing, touching the defense again, they, you know, that that's uh, it, it's it's a big high gambling type defense. You know, I okay. mean, he, he's blitzing everywhere, and you get caught in that, and you're in trouble. You know, so but um, but I think that that. Uh, you know, Crump being that uh, defensive end out there is, uh, I mean, he's he's probably their their best guy on defense. But I like Ballage, uh, number seven. Um, you know, a, a running back, and I also like Richard, the the guy that rotates in there with them. So yeah. um, I, I think they got two really good running backs, and um, you know, they just they just gotta know how they gotta learn how to win football games. All right, uh, and we'll see because uh, they got Stanford at Stanford 
Uh, we'll find out whether or not it was just uh, one of those weeks against Oregon, if they got him at the right time, or if they can eat. They don't have they don't have to win as long as they play a good game against Stanford. And by the way, Stanford lost their quarterback, Chris, and maybe that actually helped them out uh, because he right. wasn't playing well, and uh, and it, their offense seemed to move a lot better with Costello a quarterback. So uh, that that does tend to happen. Uh, Ole Miss and Alabama, and uh, when Chad Kelly was there, uh, Ole Miss was a pain in the rear uh, to Nick Saban. Uh, they might have beaten him uh, two years in a row, uh, uh, but uh, no, no Kelly anymore. But Patterson, you know, he, he's a young guy. He's a young quarterback. A.J. Brown is a talent, even though he may not play this week. And I know Haynes is a player you've talked about on defense. Now, Ole Miss, they're, 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 they're not going anywhere. So they've got uh, they're, they're under suspension for a year. So you, they're not going to be. So this, these are the types of games they have to get up for. This is like their Super Bowl kind of deal. Not that it's going to matter. Uh, but uh, what what is it on, uh, on 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 Ole Miss that they still have that we should keep an eye on? Well, you know, I, I think that uh, I think you named, you know, Patterson is he's got some talent. He hung in there with them. He he uh, you know he could have bailed out of there when all the you know thing went downhill, uh, but he didn't. He, he stayed in there with them, and I think that you know he's going to give them a chance. But boy, I mean, I don't know if they can block that Alabama front. Like I said, with you know, between pain and hand and uh, all those linebackers and uh, the secondary that uh, they lock you up, uh, Averett, you know, and Minka, you know, Fitzpatrick, and, uh, you know, I mean, they just, they're, they're really going to be tough to move. And, and they're, I tell you what, Vanderbilt thought they were going to have a chance last week. And yeah, that was, there. wow, that was crazy. But uh, <laughs> when you get those situations and, and, yep. And I guess one team is, plays their worst, and the other team plays their best, and that's what you get. Uh, well, yeah, and I'll tell you what, uh, Alabama's got their sights on uh, Ole Miss after you know losing to them a couple of times uh, here in the last you know few years. So uh, they're they're gonna believe me, Saban's not gonna have any mercy on that group. Yeah, they almost beat him three years in a row. Uh, so okay, uh, and uh, also. Uh, but by the way, Haynes, what kind of a player is Haynes? Is Haynes, uh, he's the top guy on the team as far as uh, draft, uh, f- for this year, right? Yeah. He, you know, he's, uh, he's going to be a three, four outside linebacker. Um, you know, he plays defensive end, you know, in their scheme, but, uh, I think that, you know, here, here's a guy that, uh, can be a pressure player an edge, uh, player for him. And, um, uh, I think that, uh, you know, he, he's, they're, they're probably hoping he gets 10 sacks this year. Um, but, um, you know, he's, uh, right now he'd be their star. Okay. Uh, let's, uh, uh, talk, uh, NFL for the last few minutes. And, uh, are, are you surprised to see <clears throat> Amari Cooper struggling as much as he has been? Uh, he's just been awful this season. Not sure what's going on with him. Really expected a big jump, uh, in year three and something, something's off. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, Hey, uh, I think uh, Carr is probably disappointed in Cooper uh, too. He's going to stop looking his way if he doesn't start latching on to everything. And uh, now I don't know if he's having sight problems, you know, that because that's happened. You know, sometimes guys um, their vision, uh, you know, but uh, but Cooper, you, you, I mean, you could always count on him to, to gather that ball in and stuff. And I don't know if he's getting a little gun shy with the hits that he's been taking and things, uh, but. No, he he definitely needs to clean up those drops. Now, uh, one of the teams that right now is is uh, considered one of the top teams after their big win over the Patriots uh, is uh, is uh, Kansas City, and and uh, Santos is out now for the year, so they they bring in uh, the kicker uh, Harrison Butker uh, from Georgia Tech, and he had a big career there. Uh, is uh, and, and we saw what happened with Elliott last week. So Elliot, uh, another one of these kickers that gets drafted and doesn't hang on, and and then uh, luckily for his sake, he gets picked up by the Eagles and kicks the 61 uh, yarder. So that's huge. Uh, and uh, but Butker, uh, he's, I mean, he he had a very good career at college, didn't he? He did, and I, I think the thing is, what you do with these uh, younger kickers like this, that you you know you try to, although uh, Jeff Fisher never did it you know, was their line. Uh, of course, he'd have them kicking the 55, 59 yarders uh, as often as possible. But, but, of course, he didn't have the offense that Kansas City <laughs> does either. But Butker could get 
closer. Andy Reid will get them, you know, within. They're, they're not going to be kicking long range field goals all the time with that offensive group they got because, hey, between, you know, Kelsey and Hunt and, uh, and Hill, uh, you know, you don't know who's getting the ball. So they're going to get at least close. And, uh, so that will help Butker out. He's not going to be having to kick, you know, the, those, uh, mile high, uh, um, you know, uh, field goals. And, and yeah, that other rookie kicker, uh, got the opportunity, unfortunately in Denver the first week. Uh, and, uh, and then of course he makes the, the one that they call the timeout and then it gets the next one blocked. And then, uh, and, and then the whole yep. situation the next week against Miami where, uh, I thought I, my opinion, I thought uh, they were a little bit too conservative on the uh, on that. They should have let Philip Rivers run another play, and they settled for the longer field goal. And even though they should make those, but it's, it's a kid, uh, and you never know what you're going to get from these kids. And now he's a talented kicker. He was a te- talented kicker in college. Do you think he has the makeup to rebound and, and be okay? Yeah, you know, like I said, sometimes they, the the guys once you get your foot in the door, uh, there's usually going to be somebody with these injuries and things that are going to give you an opportunity. So, yeah, I think you'll have a, have a chance to come back. I mean, I would tell Vecchio from uh, Oakland, I mean, what was he doing, you know, sitting on the sidelines? Somebody yeah. should have grabbed him up. Right. And then, of course, Oakland had the brains. that They had him uh, probably stashed somewhere. But, um, you know, uh, he, he comes in and, and does what he cut, kicked a couple 50-yarders his first time out of the block. Yeah, he's doing better than Janikowski. Uh, yep. So uh, Deshaun Watson has the big game on Sunday at Foxborough. It's not his fault they lost the game, that's for sure. Uh, but that's what happens when you go to New England and you just try to beat Tom, try to beat Tom Brady, uh, and and you leave him with the ball in his hands at the end of the game. It's not going to be pretty uh, for the opposition. But uh, that had to be a very encouraging uh, loss uh, for the franchise. And uh, and like you said though last week, it's really just about whether Deshaun Watson can stay healthy, avoid the big hits. And if he could stay healthy, then he's got a chance to have a very good career. But that's that's the thing. I mean, because you know he may not be the most accurate guy, but uh, boy, that guy just finds ways, and 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 he he's proved it in the big stages in college football, and he's already proving it in just a, a few weeks in the NFL. Yeah, no, it certainly wasn't. His, it was not his fault that uh, they lost the game the other day. They're, I tell you, uh, you know. Um, but the other thing is, New England's defense isn't what it has no, been either. No, no. You know, Problem I mean, there. New England's defense is uh, kind of a train wreck. Yeah. And uh, so, um, but uh, but I think that, um, and speaking of, uh, well, he's not a train wreck uh, for New England, but uh, Brissett had himself a heck of a game for the Colts. Yeah, I mean, is he is that is that a, is that somebody that you, you think they can now count on as as a legitimate number two behind Locke? Uh, uh, and, and is he a guy that when he came out that you thought, uh, did you think it was just a career backup or did you think he had a chance to be a starter? No, I thought he was more uh, of a backup guy, but again, you know, I always like to look at him over a three year period, you know, if, if they can get an opportunity to play, you know, and, uh, even little tidbits in, even when you're watching in preseason, do they look like they're improving and, and Brissett, uh, you know, he looked like he's improving, but he's got to be a guy that's going to stay. You know, he got because he got hurt up at uh, New England too. You know, so he wants, but he's a bigger guy. I mean, he's a, he's a good sized guy, and if you know if he can hold up, he, he he should be a real solid backup when you know for luck when luck gets back. Yeah, I remember uh, that uh, big game that he had, even though it was a losing effort. But I remember that big game he had against Florida State uh, in his last year. That game where I think they had like a big lead or something, and then Florida State yeah. came back and won. They were number one in the country. Uh, that's that's what I remember out of Brissett. But uh, uh, anyway, yeah, uh, he's somebody that looks like maybe he could start developing there. A uh, couple more to go. Uh, do you trust at all Blake Bortles? <laughs> I mean, I, I, hey, they play. I think they they should give uh, like a handicap points or something because they play over in England so much. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, when I saw that score, uh-huh. I mean, I was stunned. I, I mean, I could not believe that you know that it was forty four to nothing. And uh, I'm just, I mean, it was, I mean, I was just shocked. And uh, so, but um, no, I, Bortles, I don't think you can't trust until you see some consistency. Yeah. Now, what about their, they have some very young, uh, talented defenders, and, and this is the strength of their team. This is a real defense. Yep. And uh, what about, we know some of the top guys, 
Uh, but uh, I don't know if many people know Miles Jack. You know, Miles Jack is a very talented player. We talked a lot about him uh, over the last couple of years. And then they've got Telvin Smith, who's also starting to develop. And uh, they also have a very, uh, very other, another good young, talented lineman. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I must admit that. I don't know if it's Naku. Uh, but anyway, he's off to a really good start. So um, Yannick. Yeah. Y- Yannick. Yeah, Yannick. Yeah, there you go. The, 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 the big yeah. end. You know, you know, it surprised me, though, because when I saw him at Maryland, you know, I didn't know, I didn't have him rated up, you know, like second, third round type. I, I thought, you know, he might be one of those kind of rotate guys and things like that. But, you know, really, since he's been there, you know, he's he's done a nice job. The last couple of years, he's, he's put a lot of pressure on. I think, I want to say, I, I can't remember for sure, but I think he had like 10 sacks last year, eight sacks or something, you know. And, you know, he really, he stepped up and uh, really did a nice job. And um, uh, so, he, yeah, he, but, but yeah, you can't pronounce his name. All he does is give you production. Yeah, at least right now. But he keeps playing yeah. like this. And, 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 and last year he did too. So I think, yeah, I sure. don't think it's, I don't think it's a trend. I mean, it's, it's, it's not a fad type thing. I think it's, I think there's a lot of consistency there. Yeah, well, I should also maybe add as as long as Jacksonville wins ball games, uh, and 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 he keeps playing like that, then then we'll we'll watch more Jacksonville games and get more familiar with how to pronounce his name. Uh, right. But anyway, a uh, good time for Jacksonville. But and and uh, uh, of course, last week uh, Illuminor, the the lineman, did not play the whole game. He played a little bit uh, with the injury to Yonda for the Ravens. Uh, maybe not a surprise that the kid didn't get an opportunity to play uh, a whole lot because I mean he, he, he's pretty green. Uh, and 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 are you? Do you what do you think? Are you guessing they're going to try to just work him in a little bit to see what they got uh, before they uh, trust him because that's a big loss to lose Yonda. Yeah, it is. And Elmanir is. I mean, he is. Um... Well, you know, the thing is, uh, he, he probably got to play a little bit there in uh, England because that's where he's, you know, he's got some, yep. some background in there. And that, but but the thing, the kid is a real good athlete is what he is. He's not necessarily a great football player yet, you know. and uh, But he is a very athletic guy. And uh, to me, he was a developmental guy. And I know for sure the Ravens didn't want to play him this year if they didn't have to. Mm-hmm. Of course, when you lose, lose line, Yonda, you're – losing a lot more than just a guard you know you're a great leader and uh yep. and everything else there so now i i think that they may not have any choice but to to work elmanera in there okay uh and uh, yeah i didn't realize yonda was worth 40 points but uh maybe he is he's that good <laughs> ravens are in big trouble uh okay so uh again the 2018 our lads nfl draft preview uh is now available so they can order it now go to our and uh, i'll have uh, i'll have my booklet we'll, probably when we talk next wednesday yeah, absolutely no question about it all right i'm looking forward to it dan i appreciate it enjoy the week and we'll talk to you soon thanks man greg great being with you again thank you all right thanks dan that's dan shanka and uh that is gonna wrap things up here on our lads football network so uh, we will be back again though tomorrow thursday we don't have a time yet we never do uh tony me is going to join me to preview uh the fourth week in the nfl we'll go over every game trends injuries odds picks and all that and then on friday our college football ofn show and our fantasy football show so we've got nfl tomorrow Fantasy on Friday, college football on Friday on the Our Lads Football Radio Network. So for Dan Chonk, I'm Greg DePama. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.